Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another Mr. Central Driver video. Well, I try not to lose the keys of this bike because I am in some sweats today. Now we're shooting a quick review on the Ride One Up Portola. I'm pretty sure it's called Portola. <laughs> I always thought it was like Portola, but I think it's Portola. And basically that means this bike is, you know, it's light, compact, you can fold it in half, you can fold the handlebars down. It's very like small on the road. It weighs 60 pounds. We'll hold up to someone that's 300 pounds. The rear rack in the back will show you later. That holds 130 pounds. And this bike is now $1,000. So when it got first released, when we did our first video on it, it was 900 bucks. Now I'm gonna be reviewing this bike while it's $1,000. So an extra 100 bucks, we got the 10.3 amp hour battery in here. They do have a slightly bigger battery, which is two more amp hours and that's an extra hundred dollars more now me personally 10 amp hours is not a very big battery especially if you lock this thing in class three which i'm on right now and i'm getting about 900 to a thousand watts of peak power out of this thing it does have a 750 watt motor which most bikes in this price range especially like electric bikes they are 500 watts when you get this compact of a bike so you get a little bit of extra power on this thing and it feels great the only thing i feel when riding this thing it just it feels like you are on a small bike it feels very compact like it's not the end of the world uh small people you guys are gonna love this bike i actually have the seat up pretty high on this bike so i feel a little bit more comfortable and that's rare for me i'm 5 10 and i'm 170 pounds and uh, i love the fact that this bike can probably hold riders that are about five foot I know that's a big problem every time I review these bikes and everyone's like, I can't get on that bike, it's too small. Cause I always recommend bikes at like 5.5 five at, the, at the lowest. Like that's like the bare minimum. Even then, that's gonna be uncomfortable for a lot of people. I would say most of these bikes need to be like 5.7 or so and up and then you'll feel okay. But this one definitely, uh, for short people, you guys should be good. Now you guys might be asking, why am I back out here? Even though the bike just went up $100, we knew that was coming from my last video, but I'm pretty sure some people might have not seen my last video and I rushed to get that one out, but the company did want me to make a separate video on a review of this bike. But I wasn't gonna spend a lot of time behind the camera talking about it too much like we normally do on our videos just because I've already done kind of a base review on this thing. so. I'm just trying to uh, throw something up really quick and run it through my tests of where we take all our electric bikes out to uh, review them. So I'm gonna do some speed tests and throttle tests and turning tests and all that kind of fun stuff. Lately, I've been coming at the wrong time. So we're not gonna be able to use our original spot for our speed test. So we're gonna have to go somewhere else and we'll test out the zero to 30. All right, this looks like a good enough section right here. So let's test out the throttle only and let's go up. I think it goes up to 20 miles an hour throttle only. So let's check that out. And real quick, this bike has been charging for the longest time and we were already down two battery bars. So this battery goes very fast. That's crazy. So here we go, throttle only. One, two, three. Here we go, five, six, seven, oh, 10, 12, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And the bike should cut off right there because it won't go any faster than 20 miles an hour. This is a highly street legal certified e-bike to be on the road. You shouldn't have no problems with cops. You're in the law. There's a lot of people that complain about these bikes not being street legal. And this one fits the profile, 750 watts with throttle only up to 20 miles an hour and then pedaling to get to 28 miles an hour. That is the rule in California. I don't know where you stay at. Some places are 20 miles an hour max. Here it's 28, but all right. So anyway, now that we know that, let's get on to the pedaling test. Let me go through these gears really quick and drop them down. I wanna get into the lowest one so we can kind of go through this stuff and see how it is. So here we go. One, two, three, let's start pedaling. Go, go, go. There's a slight delay with the pedals. Getting started was a little hard. Gears feel nice. You feel one click. Man, that last gear from seven to eight, that's a tall gear right there. I could definitely feel it. 26, 27, oh God. Let's not be stupid. I don't know if no one's coming out of here, so. Not too bad pedaling this bike, especially in gear number eight. I'm definitely connected to the pedals for a while. 
I'm not ghost pedaling at all. Even right now, I'm not ghost pedaling. Let's continue going. Let's see when ghost pedaling starts. Wow, ghost pedaling is not even a factor. It's not even happening right now. I'm, I'm still not ghost pedaling. Even at 27 miles, 28 miles an hour, I am not ghost pedaling, I promise. That last gear feels really, really good. Now, if you guys ride the way I'm riding right now, especially with the battery size and doing about 29 miles an hour, which is crazy on this little bike, is you're not gonna get much range out of this thing. I know we just talked about the battery bars and I'm thinking to myself and I'm like, I'm not gonna get more than maybe like, I would say 13 to 15 miles of range out of this thing if I'm balls to the wall and not actually pedaling. If you drop it down to class one or class two, you're definitely gonna get more decent range out of it. I could see you getting probably like 30 miles of range on this thing if you definitely keep it at probably like 10 miles an hour. But if you're really using a thousand watts of power everywhere you go, yeah, it's just, it's not a very good long distance bike. It's really for like short trips going back and forth to the store or just riding around your neighborhood or maybe going on a very short group ride with some people. So we are at the hill test and you can tell that Halloween has passed and everyone broke their pumpkins over here. There are seeds and stuff all over this place. So here we go. Let's do this test really quick. We are halfway down on the battery, which is crazy. We're almost halfway down. There's no way of checking the voltage, unfortunately, so I can't see anything. But let's just see if it makes it up this hill, starting at the bottom with throttle only. One, two, three. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Oh, 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 it was so close. It was struggling to do it. It was almost going to do it, but I was starting to lose my balance because we were just going too slow at that point. But now let's try that out with actually using the pedals and see if we can make it up that one, two, three. Let's go. Hey, there you go. If you pedal and use a throttle, you're more likely to get up hills. That is awesome. You definitely felt the bike working to get up that hill, but not too bad. Whoa, this thing feels great off road, but man, these tires are a lot smaller and I had a huge rock and I felt it like ping off the side of the tire and almost threw the tire sideways. So definitely gotta be careful because we're only rocking 20 inch tires, but they're three inches wide compared to the standard four inches wide. So they're a lot smaller which makes this bike really good to turn. So when we get off this trail, we'll do some turning tests. And I'll show you, honestly, it is one of the best bikes to turn. It's like having small two inch tires on the front. So I'm sure you guys are gonna want a rating for how it is off road. And uh, it's kind of mixed. I wanna say I'm somewhere around a seven out of 10. It's pretty decently comfortable, but it's also firm at the same time. It feels like a very solid bike, especially for being foldable. But uh, it is a little jarring. I think if you wait a little bit more, it'd feel a little bit more better. But lighter people are definitely not going to be compressing the suspension that much because it really feels solid. And I have it all the way down as soft as it would go. All right, so on to the turning test. Let's watch. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Whoa! Oh! All right, so uh, one thing you gotta be careful about is that if you do use a throttle, you don't wanna pedal when turning, just keep that in mind. But when your speed starts dropping down as you're turning and you're at the max of whatever you're at, it's gonna wanna keep you at that max speed. So it will start pushing you in the corner because it starts slowing down as you're going sideways, but then it wants to, it wants to keep that top speed going that you set, whatever class mode you're in. So I'm on five right now. And oh my God, like I just felt the power kind of come out of nowhere when I was turning. It just kind of jolted me forward because it was at the max, the power cut off, and then it cut right back in when I was uh, turning. And it kind of scared me. I thought I was going to go down. The next thing we got to quickly do, I'm going to try to get up to uh, 28 miles per hour, and we're going to do a braking test. There we go, 28 miles an hour. Here we go, one, two, three. All right, all right, we slid pretty good. But wow, look, we stopped behind this little white line right here. If you guys can see that, this is a fantastic bike. You're only stopping 60 pounds of an e-bike, so let's just be real. That's very easy to do, especially with having high hydraulic brakes on this thing. And we get 180 millimeter rotors on here as well. So this thing is definitely stopping very good. And I love these tires too. And they feel beefy too. Like you can still get a flat on any electric bike, but these feel pretty thick compared to your standard traditional like Chinese tire that you would get. 
You also have a cool little headlight up here we showed you guys in the last video. You guys can go find that video. It was like from a couple weeks ago. You also get a little bit of carbon fiber as well on the headlight. But this is only like a 60 or 80 lumen headlight. It's not that bright. I would highly suggest getting an aftermarket light put on here um, because that is not that good. Now, something I didn't show you in the last video is I didn't take the battery off. So before I even loosen the battery, a lot of you guys might think, oh my God, it's gonna come off. And no, even if you, if you move this, it's not gonna do anything. You do have to use the key to pop it out, but it's still not gonna come out. You have to actually move this lock and then the battery fully comes out. And if you wanna see the battery, this is the specs on it. So if you guys wanna take a screenshot, 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour. I think I said 10.3 amp hour earlier. So 10.4 amp hour, I'm sorry, 500 watt hours pretty much. And then that's how the inside of it looks. Very nice, clean setup right here. The battery is light as well. And then basically you just gotta pop it back in there. I don't think you have to lock it with the keys. So I wanna make sure I get the keys out. There we go. And that's not going anywhere. And then the other thing I wanted to show you in real time is how to fold this thing down. So there's a little piece that you gotta push and they are a little bit hard to move when you first get the bikes. You're gonna have to break these in, but you pull that off and then you can fold this thing in half. So you can do it like that, right? Yeah, like that. And then it does have a little thing, a little stand on the bottom where you can set it on so it won't mess up the actual paint of the bike. Then there's a little latch on this other side. If you guys can see this, actually you gotta push this in first. Once you push this in, then there's this part over here. Okay, that's right, there's two different things. You gotta get used to how these bikes fold down. Okay, so I had it backwards. So that's the way it's actually supposed to fold down. So now when I push this button right here, now it should fold down. Yeah, there we go, the cable's in the way. And then I was wondering what the strap was in the back. And the strap is to hold this whole thing together when you put it in the car. So maybe you would just wrap it around here real quick snap it back to that. I'm pretty sure there's an easier way to do this. And then this is how it looks folded up. It is pretty compact. This would definitely fit in a very small car. So I like that. It's pretty nice. It just takes a little bit getting used to on folding the bike and unfolding it. All the folding bikes are pretty much the same, but they all have their unique touches to them. And one thing I noticed about this bike, and it could be the way that the cable management is on it, but every single time I fold it, this happened in my last video as well when I put it at work. All this stuff disconnects. So I think the cables are a little bit too short. It looks great when the bike is sitting, but when you go to fold it, you're always gonna have to plug all this stuff back in. So if you fold your bike and realize this is happening, then take a look at your cables. They might've come unplugged. And make sure everything works again, it comes back on. The cool thing I like about this bike is that it does have a memory function. So it always goes back into the class that you were in for pedal assist. And we're always in the max. So five is the max that you can go into. And that's, that's awesome because if you're the only one riding the bike, it sucks every single time you get on the bike and it's at one. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna go for a ride. Turn the bike on and you're like, mm, go all the way up. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but the fact that it has a memory function, honestly, that's probably one of the nicest conveniences, I think. Now let's get into the throttle response. It's obviously on the left side and not the right side because you have your gear mechanism over here. I'm so used to having a throttle on the right side, but some of these bikes will come on the left side. It's just something you gotta get used to over time. Let's see how fast this thing is. So one, two, three. It has about a second delay, all right? Just keep in mind, so one, two, three. Yeah, it's about a second delay. It, it, the power comes in pretty slowly and then it really starts ramping up. Here we go, let's try that again. One, two, three. Yeah, so that's about a second delay. Um, the power comes on gradually. It feels like the first second that you hold on to it, it's like real nice and smooth and then it really kicks in the power. But overall, it's not too bad, especially for a bike being under a thousand dollars. I'm not gonna complain too much that it takes about a second for the throttle to come on. So now what I wanna do is I wanna see when the pedals come on and we're gonna drop down these gears so we can get a better reaction out of them. So here we go, one, two, three. The pedals almost feel faster. Well, let's see that again. Let me hold off the brakes, one, two, three. Oh, okay, no, they're about the same. Yeah, a second for both, so one, two, three. Yeah, all right, so it doesn't matter if you use the throttle or the pedals. The one thing I just love about this bike is it feels so good to pedal. I don't know exactly what type of voodoo magic they're doing on this bike, but if you really want a bike to pedal all the way up to 28, 29 miles an hour, and this is the legit speed, by the way, 
this thing feels awesome. I don't feel like I'm disconnected from the bike at all and my feet are just like free spinning. They're not, this feels really good. One thing worth mentioning on this bike is that when you're off the road on the dirt, it's not good to let one hand off it. You can even see how the handlebars are kind of shaking a little bit. I don't know if the GoPro is catching that, but it's okay if you're riding on the street, you still need to be careful with one hand. But this bike is not as stable with one hand compared to other e-bikes because you're not working with a BMX style setup. You're working with a big long journey, raft neck stem, however you want to call it. That's what David Brand New calls it. You can hit him up to get a handlebar setup for these bikes. They're the same as the electric XPs. And that will definitely change the handling of this bike and how it feels. But since you're working with this long old tube right here, it doesn't feel comfortable to uh, let your hands off and pedal or have at least one hand on there, especially in the dirt. Do not do it. I don't want to see any of you guys get hurt. So this is not the most stable bike to be riding with one hand. You need both hands on this bike. Now you do have a lockout on the right hand side. So if you want to tighten the suspension up and not have it travel at all, you can do that. But I would say that it is a little bit more stiff than I would like for my weight, which I mentioned earlier. But it definitely, when you like do push it down, it is definitely very springy. So you can definitely uh, pop up stuff. So if you need to go up curves and whatnot, especially this bike is like 60 pounds, like popping up stuff like this, you can even lift up the back of it if you just give it some force. It's not too bad. It's a really sporty feeling bike. It feels like a very light, powerful car. I think it only has like 60 or 65 newton meters of torque, so obviously it's not up there, but it definitely feels like it holds its own weight while riding around town. If I was barely getting into electric bikes and I had a budget of $1,000, I wouldn't be disappointed with this bike. I would just feel a little bit like compact. So I'm not recommending this bike to anyone that's over six foot. If you're like six one and up, no, just don't buy this bike. As much as you can adjust the seat up, I feel like the room from the handlebars, which I'm trying to be careful while going this fast with one hand, it's just too close to my chest. So I wouldn't recommend it for you guys. And would you look at that? We're down one more battery bar. So we're down to our last two and I haven't been riding very long at all. Okay, so what are, whoa, watch out birdies. <laughs> what are my final thoughts on this bike? Because I'm not gonna go behind my DSLR camera and talk about this bike. I'm just gonna do it while we're on our way home. Cause like I said, this is a very quick video of kind of reviewing this bike because we've already kind of done a video review of it. Um, the tires are decently loud, but I actually like them for the street. They feel very good on the street. They feel very good off road. The suspension is a little stiff, like I said, but if you're a little bit heavier than me, like 200, 250 pounds, I think it's gonna be perfectly fine for you. You can also lock them out as well if it's like too soft. The handlebar setup, not a big fan of, but that's kind of what these foldable bikes are. They're made to be compact and you're not gonna get that feeling with the BMX handlebar setup. But if you do go with David brand new, you can get the setup from him and he has a quick disconnect BMX handlebar setup. That's a super nice way to go. He's making some good money over there selling those kits and rightfully so, it's really good. Um, the thumb throttle up here on the left is a little weird to get used to, but you'll get used to it after riding for a few miles. The gear shifters are really good. They're what come on most bikes. I'm not complaining about that whatsoever. The brakes feel absolutely fantastic, especially for this bike being 60 pounds. I'm loving it. The fenders front and back, so we're not getting covered in a bunch of like dirt and water, depending on what you run over. Cause it's gonna start raining here soon, even though it looks like a nice sunny day. It's gonna start raining, I think, here in the next like couple weeks. The seat to me feels definitely good. I don't know if I wanna ride it for 50 miles straight, cause it's not like a bench seat from a moped style e-bike. Those are very very comfortable um, you can always upgrade the seat down the road if you want but if you're just getting this bike and you're not gonna upgrade anytime soon when you buy it um, you're not gonna have a problem with the seat at all I, I really don't have a problem sitting on the seat it's not a big deal for me now moving on to the power management system which includes the motor and the controller it's wickedly fast for what it is like it's not gonna blow your socks off if you've had electric bikes in the past but I'm saying if this is your very first bike this feels just like electric XP's e-bike you're gonna get a lot of money for $1,000. And please don't pull out in front of me. Thank you, thank you. I think you guys would really like this bike. I'll have links down in the description you guys can check out as well. I don't have the discount code right now for you guys, but they said that I'm supposed to get a discount code from them after these bikes go up to $1,000. So you guys should be able to get this bike for 950 bucks. So I gotta reach out to the company and see what they say because I'm still waiting for that coupon code to hit. So I can't give it to you right now, but it's most likely gonna be Mr. Central Driver. But definitely just look in the description to see if there's a coupon code. Maybe I'll have it by the time I actually get to editing this video, which would be in a few days after I'm filming it right now. But 
I really like the bike. This is a very good contender to Electric XP. And I will say this paint job on this thing is way better than Electric XP. Um, they do have some accessories you can put. So obviously we have these bolt holes right here. You get a front basket if you want. And of course you have the rear rack back there that's welded to the bike. You can't take it off. The only thing is you're gonna have to get like an actual basket to put on the rack, just like you would have to buy the accessory from the front or a milk crate. You can get one of those zip tied or you know, get some bolts from Home Depot and like make up your own type of uh, storage thing. That's what I see a lot of people do, but it's overall not bad. The grips are good too. Um, I'm not a huge fan of grips that have like your palm rest on it, but I know a lot of you guys like that and they're locking as well. So they're not going anywhere. So you do have to get those in the right position as you start riding because you're not gonna be able to move them on the fly like the cheaper bikes. Make sure you do that before riding. And overall guys, like can't go wrong. It's really a good competitor in the market. I know there's going to be some people that say this is a great bike for a thousand dollars and other people are going to say like it's not powerful enough for me i need more power and that's kind of how i feel but not everyone's that way so just kind of be courteous to everybody when you drop a comment knowing that uh not every bike is going to be for everybody but i really want to see your guys' thoughts on what you guys think about it and if you even watched the other video before watching this one <laughs> dude these brake stops so good man be careful when pedaling i just realized that my foot came in contact with the ground i'll show you this really quick before uh, we get going any farther so look like when you're turning look how close that pedal is to the ground that's like really close and then another thing too is that i didn't show you this has a quick release right here so if you need to change out the tire or the rim or you got a flat whatever quick release in the front makes that very easy now the back isn't as easy as the front but I still like the little touches that, you know, companies do. So it actually makes it more portable if you think about it, if you have to take the front wheel off when storing it in a car, if you're gonna fold it up and it's still not fitting. You have to have the most tiniest car for that reason though, if it's not fitting, even when folding up. So I know you guys are gonna wanna know if I would actually buy this bike myself. And if my budget was under a thousand dollars, it would be a hard choice. There's only three bikes I can think of that I reviewed. The Mac Fox X1, the Electric XP, and this one. And they're all right at $1,000. And I feel like they're all good in their own sense. Me personally, I don't need a foldable bike. So I'd probably go with the Mac Fox X1. I have a coupon for that bike as well. If you're looking for a foldable bike, then it's gonna be between this one and Electric XP. And that's a hard choice, guys, because Electric XP, I believe, has a bigger battery. But I feel like this bike performs better. I'm sorry, but it does feel like it has more power and just kind of goes around town a little bit easier. So that's a tough spot. I don't know. I don't know how I would recommend that, but if you're more into ride one up and their customer service and you have good luck with their company already and you like this extra strap back here, which by the way, you have um, a brake light and a headlight as well. The headlight's not that good. Like I said, you might want to have an extra headlight, but if you just love the paint job of this thing and you think you're gonna upgrade it, you like this extra handle, you like the little thing on the bottom so when you do set it on the ground, it's not gonna hit. Um, this is a good contender e-bike. It's not too bad, but definitely look at getting the 13.4 amp hour battery instead of the 10.4 amp hour battery. So that's gonna be an extra $100. It's gonna give you an extra, I would probably say like three to five miles of range if you're in class three. And if you wanna know how to do that really quick before we end the video, you hold these two buttons right here and that's class one. Hold those buttons again, you're in class two. And then hold these buttons and you're in class three. And so if you go in the lower classes, you're definitely gonna get more range out of it. It's just, this is the worst case scenario at me being 170 pounds. I came back and I have two battery bars. And if I turn the bike off, let's see if it actually jumps up in battery bars, if it's one of those bikes or not. See it in real time. Oh yeah, it did. So we went up to three battery bars instead of two. So it's probably going off a voltage sack. So I don't know, you guys make your choice, see what you like out there. And those are the three options I recommend if you're looking for a bike under a thousand dollars. And I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys are true MVPs and I'll see you. Oh, and you also have a spot for pegs too, if you want to put pegs back here. But I don't know if you're going to be putting someone back here, maybe a seat or something, maybe, I don't know. And then you have this little chain guard right here. I forgot to mention that, but this is a nice touch. So it's not going to mess up the paint on this bike. All right, guys, peace out.